Welcome back, everyone. Our next guest has dressed some of the most influential women in the world and some of the biggest celebs, stars like Olivia Munn, Kerry Washington, and Chrissy Metz, just to name a few, have been seen hitting the red carpet in her gorgeous designs. And now the Toronto-raised women's wear designer is celebrating her decade-long career in the fashion industry with a homecoming this week. Please welcome to the show, for the first time, actually, Tanya Taylor is here. <laughs> Thank Delighted you. to have you here. And I want to go back to the beginning because you were a student at McGill University in Montreal and you were studying business. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to make the leap into fashion. So cut to 2009, you get an internship with Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen um, in their, at their original label. They were, of course, the fashion it girls of the, for the 2000s. What did they teach you sort of about the fundamentals of the fashion business? And also, what are they like? <laughs> <laughs> um, they were amazing. I, I think what was so cool about that time was that I was 24, they were 24, and it was so interesting to work for bosses that were really designing from an instinct and a personal point of view of understanding the customer. And um, they love vintage, they love color, they had such great, bold ideas. Um, so I really learned a lot from you know designing with them. Yeah. Okay, but then at 25 years old, you decided to start your own line and you said that it was the right time to be gutsy. For those of uh, people who are watching, um, especially young women who want to be entrepreneurial and who want to like follow that dream, what advice do you have for them? So I, I think gutsy to me means that you're naive and you have courage. So I, I, didn't know, I didn't know what I was doing. But I think what I did know is I had worked for four years at a company. I had built mentors. I had an example of what I wanted to create. So I always tell women that are starting their own businesses, surround yourself with advice. Because when you become an entrepreneur, it can be pretty lonely. But if you have really great people around you that fill in for what you don't know, it's really a lot easier of a journey. So fascinating. So your collections are known for their creativity and we understand that you even hand paint all of these fabrics, these prints yourself. So we wanna know what is that process like and what is it about that sort of bold and bright print that always draws you in? I think that women wake up, you put on color, you're sending a message. I think I grew up with my mom and my grandmother who just chose to wear bright colors and it really kind of um, influenced me. And then when I started the brand, I started painting. I think I've always been a fine artist in my free time, but it's been so cool to bring it into a mm -hmm. career and just tell stories through art. So when women wear our prints, I think they're wearing a story, they're wearing our art and it's really influencing them in a very creative way. So I hand paint a lot of our prints on canvas and then I also have been using more digital ways of building them on iPads and being able to kind of translate our art digitally, which is kind of cool. really cool. Really cool. One of the biggest conversations around fashion is inclusivity and being able to represent everybody or at least service everybody. But you've been doing this for a long time. Your line is inclusive. It ranges from size uh, zero to 22. So can you talk to us about the link between fashion and confidence and, and why this is so important to you? Yeah, I have a really personal perspective of why we started becoming size inclusive. My mom, when I was growing up, was a size 18, and she ran a public Canadian company with 5,000 men, and she needed to have confidence walking into a boardroom, and she just didn't have any clothes to wear. So I would see her on a weekend feeling her confident and creative, wearing what didn't matter, and then Monday mornings kind of like feeling deflated. So I knew that fashion could fix that. I think that I really wanted to build a team where we could build and size inclusive collections. And then we partnered with A.D. Bryant from SNL. Yeah. And she was really great in telling personal stories about also how she didn't have access to clothing that resembled her personality. So we've been doing it for almost seven years now and really pushing retailers to support us and really kind of re-scripting the narrative around what's available for women of all sizes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So great. Tanya, I hear there's an amazing story behind the first time that Anna Wintour popped up into your office. Can you share that? Yeah, so I was um, early in my career. It was like year two, and I really didn't know how to articulate my vision, and she showed up at our studio. And unfortunately, someone gave her the wrong address, so she oh, had spent no. um, the 
10 minutes before walking down Broadway, five blocks in her Manolo slingbacks, and she showed up so disappointed and I showed up so excited to see her. I had like refreshed her coffee three times, I was ready. And um, it was one of those moments that you just have to keep going. Like I felt that entrepreneurship for me has given me those challenging moments where you just have to show courage, some humor, invite her into the studio, and she's been a really great mentor since, but it, it, relationships can come from rocky starts. Right. So it's <laughs> kind of the moral, <laughs> of the moral of the story. I love that. Uh, okay, so we mentioned off the top, you have worked with some of the most influential and powerful women in the entire world. So we've got some photos of our favorites in your clothes, and we want you to tell right. us what you think of when you see these photos, okay, okay, of these women in your clothes. I'm excited. So let's start with, I mean, she's a queen. Come on, Michelle Obama. Yes. Um, so Michelle Obama wore us 13 times when she was first lady. This was the first time she wore us. I just jumped up and down. I like shut down wow. the office. We all partied. It was great. <laughs> Gorgeous. Michelle, okay. Um, how about this photo of Beyonce? Oh my God. So come Be on. Beyonce had just cut her hair. She was landing in London with Jay-Z. She bought this skirt at Saks while I was standing there. So it was like her stylist came in. I was in the store. It was one of those moments that felt so special because you knew where it came from. Wait a minute, from. did you speak to her? No. Okay. Her. <laughs> I have met her, in, but I feel like, no, this but time was her. a surprise. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> um, all right, up next, Taylor Swift. Um, <laughs> Taylor Swift, I think she brought this younger generation to the brand. And that week, she wore that sweater, the same um, Michelle Obama, Kerry Washington, and others wore it. So it was kind of a cool time to see like the brand touch a diverse group of women. Okay, so uh, Tanya, you're gonna be at uh, TNT in Toronto tomorrow, yeah. and then you're bringing some new pieces along. What can you tell us about the event and what's next for your brand? Yeah, we'll be there um, tomorrow and Friday, and then we're opening our first store in New York on um, Madison and 77th. That's a picture of the outside right now, and we're just so excited to get more time with customers. I think post-COVID, I've just loved getting to know everyone and learning who we're designing for. Like for gorgeous. summer, just so yeah. great. Tanya, it's been such a pleasure Thank meeting you. you. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.